Hey guys, it's Edward. So, you've actually managed to make it to the end of the algorithm portion of the series. Don't worry, we will still have a few more sections to go, like with the behavioral and system design, whenever those come out. But I want to take this time to give you a taste of how everything you've done up until this point is fairly intertwined with the engineering process at big companies. But wait, did you say like five videos back that the interview process has nothing to do with actual programming and that it sucks? What the hell are you talking about? Um, kind of. Yeah, the interview does kind of suck. Let's all face it. On some level, yes, the actual questions themselves that you're dealing with have nothing to do with what you will be doing on the job. You won't be doing tasks like reversing a linked list regularly. But I would encourage you to think a little deeper. At the very beginning, I gave you reasons why the coding interview is stupid. But I also said, You can blame the nature of the interview. You can blame the interview prep material. But that really doesn't help. Even if the interview is a load of <laughs> everyone is playing the game and there are people out there who can consistently score well. If a bunch of people can get through these coding interviews and the results tend to be highly correlated with their abilities as an engineer, the interview process must be doing something right. And throughout the series, in a pursuit of trying to get the right and optimal answer systematically and every time, we have derived actual systems for solving these problems. Funny enough, the systems that we have derived are actually very similar to systems we use in large tech companies in order to engineer products. I'm going to pull back the curtain and show you how the approach to being good at the interview is similar to the engineering process for a reason. I'll also explain how the key to actually cracking the coding interview makes passing it actually inaccessible to most people who take it. Finally, I'll give you my judgment on whether or not the interview actually does an effective job at judging candidates. So before I begin, if you could tap that like button and click subscribe and watch this till the very end, that would really help me out. This video takes a long time to make and if you watch it till the end, it lets me know that you really like the content that I make. So welcome to the coding interview. You suck. So first and foremost, let's actually outline the engineering process at a large tech company. Every idea, whether it's a system overhaul or a product, begins with the design. We think of the results we want and then figure out how we get there. Do we need to move some code around? Maybe we need to use one component or another. Maybe we should introduce a new framework. We write these into an ERD, an engineering review document, for others to read, judge, fix, accept, or reject. These reviewers might know more than us or catch underlying issues with our initial proposal. Some of these might be that the cost of doing something in a particular way is just too high in terms of man hours. Others are that the design itself just doesn't scale. Alongside the ERD, we might do a test application before just to see if the idea works. Once that's complete, then we begin building. We will establish acceptance tests for the minimum viable product where if the test is passed, we will accept that the product is complete. This can be end-to-end -end testing, unit testing, and just about any other kind of testing in between. And we will try to cover as many reasonable cases as possible. Now, why the hell did I spend the last three minutes boring you with the high-level description of an engineering process? Because that's almost exactly what we do in order to do well on the interview process. Our design is a plain English description of the algorithm we want to propose. Instead of an ERD, we try to create pseudocode implementations to see if our idea works against toy examples. Instead of having random engineers come and review our document, we have a conversation with an interviewer who gives us hints and guidelines because he already knows where the code is headed or at least some idea of the answer. We establish test cases to cover all our bases and then maybe some edge cases afterwards. Then we build our code piece by piece to work with our test cases until the code is finished. And even the same technical skills apply. Knowing what constitutes a good test will make your test bulletproof and more complete when it comes to the interview. Knowing how code needs to be written in order to be clean and to scale will help you tackle the follow-up modifications to your code. Understanding and knowing what the most reasonable scenarios are for your product will actually allow you to create better systems. Being competent at these technical aspects will make your interview code far better than the next guy. So if the underlying process that is used for established tech companies to create products at scale is the exact same one that we use to conquer technical interviews, don't you think that maybe there is some merit to the technical interview? It's almost like engineering the solution to an interview problem requires you to take the exact same steps that you might 
for an actual engineering review. That being said, there are still a thousand tiny little things that stand in between you and the acceptance. So feel free to contact me for coaching if you still have problems or issues. Link is in the description down below. But wait, there's more. Everyone who complains about the coding interview not being an accurate gauge of how good you are at being an engineer completely misses the point, which is probably why they're failing the interview to begin with. We're not looking for people who can regurgitate answers from a college textbook, even though that may have worked for you in the past. And we're not just looking for people to just implement and think about things on a surface level, because thinking like that creates really bad code that is unmaintainable and destroys the code base and eventually kills the product. We want deep and skilled thinkers. So then why don't you think about the interview itself just like that as well, instead of just the problems? You shouldn't see coding problems as problems you might actually do on the job. No, the skills that you use to dissect an interview problem should be the same skills that you use to dissect problems at actual work. And I think it's because of this that you end up with a lot of people who have the Dunning-Kruger effect when they talk about their coding interview experiences. The Dunning-Kruger effect states that the people who are incompetent don't know that they are incompetent because the skill to recognize one's incompetence is the exact same skill that is required to get past it. You'll see this on LeetCode forums and Blind where the person will type up about how they failed at a Facebook interview but thought they did really well and that the interview is just stupid and how they answered every single question correctly. Because the fact of the matter is, is that the interview does pass the very best engineers at a pretty consistent rate. They have never been through a rigorous engineering process before. And so they cannot recognize that the way to break these interviews down is to think of them in terms of an actual engineering process. And without that recognition, they cannot properly evaluate themselves. And as a result, they vastly overestimate their abilities. Now, does the coding interview have its issues? Absolutely. In fact, the whole situation is a bit of a catch 22. For one, you really only get this insight of how the engineering process at tech companies is similar to the process of actually doing these interviews once you've actually been at the tech company. But in order to get into the tech company, you need to actually pass this interview first, which means that you need to have this insight first. So then which is really supposed to come first? Passing the interview so that you get the insight of the engineering process or getting the engineering process beforehand outside of the tech company in order to do the interview process that gets you in the tech company. But most other companies that you work at won't really have that rigorous engineering process for you to really study and understand. Yeah, it's a chicken and egg problem, basically. And that's my biggest criticism of the coding interview. It's a walled garden where once you figure out the actual underlying patterns and systems, it's not as impressive or as difficult as it looks or as people in the industry make it out to be. It's also why new grad roles at fan companies are still incredibly difficult to get because most people haven't broken through that mode of thinking. They don't have that few years of industry experience to break out of that college thinking mode and really try to solve problems on their own. This is why most people spam leak codes with terrible submissions because they're only doing what they know, memorizing answers. And really in that regard, it's not your fault. You spend hours and hours trying to nitpick and figure out what gaps there are in your knowledge, rereading all the intricate details of discrete mathematics and red black trees, when really is all just one big misdirection away from how you actually solve the interview problems themselves. Only a small percentage of people who do terribly on these coding interviews really have the right to criticize the coding interviews. But even then, there is some degree of nuance. Do you remember that tweet by Max Howell where he criticized the Google interviewing system for rejecting him despite him making one of the most popular open source softwares in the world? Let's actually dive into the nuances of this. He actually responded to this question at Quora about what the meaning was behind his tweet. It's long, but the short of it is that even though his software is insanely successful, it's because it's a software that prioritizes user experience. It doesn't handle managing dependencies that well for you, even though that is a pretty common topic in computer science, but it does try to troubleshoot them for you as a way to make up for its technical limitations. To quote Max, but well, what the fuck does computer science have to do with modern app development? And well, that's all I want people to take from my tweet. So really, Max's biggest criticism of the interview is not the interview itself. And in a sense, he's actually right. Dijkstra's algorithm isn't going to help you write a shiny new service for an Android app. But as he writes further, but ultimately, should Google have hired me? Yes, absolutely yes. I'm often a dick. I'm often difficult. I often don't know computer science, but, but I make really good things. Maybe they aren't perfect, but people really like them. Surely, surely Google could have used that.
And this is the nuance. In my view, Max has earned the right to criticize the interviewing system. Despite his very impressive background in a non-computer science field, he's still got a no. But it's not like Max is incapable of getting a job at Fang anyway. His LinkedIn says that he was a senior developer at Apple. So guess what? A guy who doesn't know computer science still passed a Fang interview. I guess the system works after all, at least across a bunch of companies and over time. But today, the coding interview is probably the best in terms of balancing efficiency, scalability, and eliminating false positives. I can go deeper into this in later videos, but suffice it to say that the time spent trying to interview a candidate is not cheap. It takes hours of pre and post interview to actually do the interview, time that could be spent developing a product. Furthermore, the interview should be such that anyone can give it. Finally, the interview should be conservative and avoid bad hires because bad hires can destroy a team and a code base. This type of interview can be given to any engineer and can be conducted by any engineer, which makes it efficient. The amount of time spent per candidate is the same and the questions can be reused because every engineer should know CS fundamentals. You can substitute one employee for another as the interviewer. And finally, doing this with multiple interviewers will eliminate individual biases over a large enough sample size, which eliminates false positives. So let's answer the overarching question. Does the coding interview work for judging candidates? The answer is yes. It's not the best, but it does work. It's a bit unfair and it does reject some of the good ones, but over time, it does a pretty good job at figuring out who is good and who is not. But who knows, this just might end up being another silly endeavor at interviewing people when we look back at it. But for now, there's a very good justification for why the technical interview is here to stay. It's been a decade since this has become widespread practice and so far, it really hasn't changed much. So that'll do for me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like this video, Please like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.